Today is day three in our novena to St. Joseph. I'm here at St. Stephen's Catholic Church, and yesterday we spoke about the fatherhood of St. Joseph. Now today we're going to speak about, I guess you could say, how our Lord Jesus Christ acted as a son to his father, St. Joseph. So we learn that when Jesus was lost for three days in the temple, well, he knew where he was, but Mary and Joseph had lost him. And they found him in the temple, and he returned home, and he was subject to them. That phrase, he was subject to them, really makes us pause and think about his sonship to Mary and Joseph. Now let's see, let's hear now what uh, Mother Venerable Maria Cecilia Bai, OSB, has to say in her life of St. Joseph. Chapter 54, The Life of the Holy Family in Nazareth After the Finding of Jesus. After the return to Nazareth, the divine youth lived in complete subjection to Mary and Joseph. He sought to conform himself to their wishes in all things. It was extremely embarrassing for Joseph to have his divine son thus subservient to him, especially now that he was practically a young man. The saint humbled himself and acknowledged his nothingness. On bended knee, he besought the heavenly father to allow that he, a poor and miserable wretch, might be in all things subject to the commands of the divine savior. However, God would not, would not concede to Joseph's wish in this regard, and so it became incumbent upon Joseph to submit to the divine dispositions and to the situation of seeing his Savior subject to him. Truly, Jesus never did anything without Joseph's approval. He did not even leave the shop to go and see his mother without Joseph's express permission. Joseph was amazed at the Savior's great humility and endeavored to emulate him. The sight of divinity itself being thus submissive to his commands only made him seek to abase himself all the more. Hence, when Jesus could not see him do so, he would prostrate himself on the ground and adore him. Or when Jesus left the workshop, shop, he would kiss the floor where the sacred feet had rested. Or he would lovingly put his lips to those articles which Jesus had touched with his sacred hands. Every time Jesus asked him for permission, or whenever he received from him some work to do in the shop, Joseph would always first humble himself interiorly. Then he would reassert that he was doing things as he was in order to fulfill the divine will and not from any considerations of natural superiority on his part. For was he not, in reality, the most lowly of servants? Quite evidently, the authority which had been delegated to Joseph served only to increase his humility. Although it was not really necessary, Jesus submitted himself to apprenticeship under his father and very humbly asked him for instructions as to how he was to do his work. The saint was well aware that Jesus desired to practice humility and obedience, and so he gave him the requested instructions with the greatest earnestness and love. Well, there we have a little bit from the life of St. Joseph, and now let's look at a couple of theological considerations on this same topic. So we have the commentary of Suarez, and this is coming from the book by Father Joseph Mueller, S.J., who uh, wrote a book called The Fatherhood of St. Joseph, published in 1952 by B. Herder and Company. And this is quoted from Suarez from his work De Mysteriis Vitae Christi. Suarez comments on the passage, he was subject to them. This sentence signifies that Jesus actually did rather than what he was obliged to do. For in truth, on account of the dignity of his person, he was in the proper sense subject to no man. But to indicate the high position of St. Joseph, it was sufficient that Christ considered only and specifically in his human nature and origin was by right to be subject to him, and that, though exempt from it by his divine nature, he wished to be actually subject to him and to render respect and obedience to him as to his father and superior. 
unquote. Now, you, realize, you, you notice here that he's differentiating between the human nature and the divine nature. So in his human nature, Jesus was, uh, was subject to him by right. Although he was exempt from that, um, he was exempt from that by his divinity. But living in his humanity, he submitted himself to it. All right, let's see what Pope Leo XIII has to say. Pope Leo XIII writes in, from Quam Quam Plurius, published uh, or um, promulgated in 1889. Saint Joseph is distinguished above all others by that august divinity. Sorry, start that over. Saint Joseph is distinguished above all others by that august dignity, which consists in this: that according to the divine plan, he was the protector of the Son of God the Father of Jesus in the opinion of man, the natural consequence of which was that the Word of God humbly submitted himself to Joseph, obeyed his commands, and paid him all the respect that children owe to their father. And there we have a little bit on the obedience of Jesus to Mary and Joseph being a good son. Well, let's Let's see, where did I put my prayers? Here they are. All right, let's pray our novena prayer. Nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti, Amen. O Saint Joseph, whose protection is so great, so strong, so prompt, before the throne of God, I place in you all my interests and desires. O Saint Joseph, assist me by your powerful intercession and obtain for me from your divine Son all spiritual blessings through Jesus Christ our Lord, so that having engaged here below your heavenly powers, I may offer my thanksgiving and homage to the most loving of fathers. O Saint Joseph, I never weary contemplating you and Jesus asleep in your arms. I dare not approach while he reposes near your heart. Press him in my name and kiss his fine head for me and ask him to return the kiss when I draw my dying breath. Amen. O Saint Joseph, hear my prayers and obtain my petitions. O Saint Joseph, pray for me. Now let us call to mind our intentions for this novena. And now let us sing our chant to St. Joseph. Sancte Joseph, protector noster, ora pro nobis. Sancte Joseph, protector noster, Ora pro nobis. Please subscribe to this video channel. Hit the bell if you'd like to be notified of future videos. Please like this video and share it with as many people as you can. Let's get a lot of people praying to St. Joseph this year. And don't miss a day of prayer with us.